All right, section 9.4 is hypothesis test for proportions. You're going to feel a lot of similarities between what we did in 9.2 and 9.3. In a recent Gen X to Z American College student survey, 90% of female college students rated the social network site Facebook as cool. The other 10% rated it as lame. Assume that the survey was based on a sample of 500 students. A marketing executive at Facebook wants to advertise the site with the slogan more than 85 percent of female college students think Facebook is cool. Before launching the ad campaign he wants to be confident that the slogan is true. Can he conclude that the proportion of female college students who think Facebook is cool is greater than 85 percent? This is an example of a problem that calls for a hypothesis test about a population proportion. The notation that we use here is exactly the same as it was for the confidence intervals. P is the population proportion, X is the number of individuals that fit into a category, we'll call those successes, N is your sample size, P hat is your sample proportion, it's your number of successes divided by the number of trials. The assumptions that we make here are exactly the same as they were for the confidence intervals. You have to have a simple random sample. The population is at least 20 times as large as the sample. The items in the population are divided into two categories, and n times p and n times q both have to be bigger than or equal to 10. On your graphing calculator, what we will be looking for is the one prop z test when you're testing a claim about a proportion. So let's look at this problem. We just read the problem. Here's what we want to know. In the survey, we were told that 500 people were surveyed. P hat is equal to 90%, so that's 0 0.90. In order to get x, the number of successes, because we need that number for our input, that's going to be n times p hat. So that's 500 times 0 0.90, and that happens to be 450. We begin by writing our null and our alternative hypotheses. What will we use for our parameter now? Is it still the mean? No, it's a proportion. Our parameter will be p. p equals, they want to claim that the percentage of people that think Facebook is cool is greater than 0.85. That's what we put here. Greater than means greater than 0.85. Next, we identify what our significance level is. Alpha is equal to what? And then we draw a picture. Proportions use the normal distribution. So I'm back to drawing a normal curve. Will this be a left tail, right tail, or two tail test? Right tail, so my alpha level is all going to be over here on the right. This area is 0.05. That means my critical value is 1.645. Then I need to find my test statistic and my p-value. And then I can make my decision and draw my conclusion. We go to our calculators and we hit stat go over to tests, and the test that we want is number five, a one prop z test. Our null hypothesis value was 0.85. x is the number of successes, we said that was 450. n is the number of trials, that was 500. This is a right tail test, so we highlight greater than, and this is what your input screen will look like. Your output screen gives you the results that you need. So what is my test statistic? Z equals 3.13. My p-value has this E negative 4 in it. Remember, that's scientific notation, which means I need to move that decimal four places, which gives me three zeros. So that's 0 0.0009, because the number after the 8 was a 7. We round that 8 up to a 9. So my test statistic is way out here. 3.13. Based on that, would I reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? Now I rejected this null hypothesis, which means I proved the alternative. So can Facebook say that the percentage of people that think Facebook is cool is greater than 85%? Yes. See how that works? Once again, left tail, right tail, two tail, critical regions, the tail is determined by the alternative hypothesis. Here's one more example, and then we're done for the night. A nationwide survey of working adults indicates that only 50% of them are satisfied with their jobs. The president of a large company believes that more than 50% of employees at his company are satisfied with his job. To test his belief, he surveys a random sample of 100 employees, and 54 of them report that they are satisfied with their jobs. Can he conclude that more than 50% of employees at his company are satisfied with their jobs. What will our null hypothesis be? 
what's my parameter? P equals 0.5. If you want to put 0 0.50, that's fine. Your alternative will be what? Our alpha level will be what? 0.05. And then we draw a picture. Our picture will be a normal distribution. This is going to be a right tail test. So my critical value is going to be positive. This alpha level is off to the right, and that critical value is 1.645. Then we go to our calculator to find our test statistic and our p-value. Then we need to make a decision and draw a conclusion. Let's go to the calculator. We hit stat, test, number five is the one proportion z-test. We have summary statistics. Our null hypothesis value is 0.5. x was 54, n was 100. This is still greater than, and there's our results. What is our test statistic going to be? z equals 0.8 and our p-value 0 0.2119 0 0.8 is over here. Do we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? It's in the clear and our p-value is huge. This number right here was the p-value and this was our test statistic. This is p-hat, the sample proportion. Since we failed to reject the null hypothesis, can he conclude that more than 50% of the employees at his company are satisfied with their jobs? No, he cannot. And this wraps up section 9.4.